Hey there, Aries, and welcome to your full moon, February 27th, 2020 reading. This is a deep dive, so I hope you're cool with longer readings. Uh, so, but if you're short on time, you can always stop and come back, take your time with it. But I was guided to do deeper, longer readings. They've been about an hour, a little bit more even. So it's just very free flow. I'm guided to um, do different decks for different uh, reads, for different signs for this full moon. It's been really fun and very different. We've had a lot going on in February. We had the Stargate from 2.2 2 to 2.12. We had the Mercury retrograde. We had the Stellium. We had the uh, the new moon um, on the 11th. And then we had the portal on the 22nd. Lots going on leading up to this full moon. So without further ado, let's get into it. If you are new to me though, um, I am Infinity. I'm a psychic, physical empath, medical medium, uh, distance energy healer. I work with people and animals. Uh, I have a couple of awesome, um, or one big program for ascension and deep healing and clearing, connecting with Mother Earth Gaia uh, and working with your angelics and archangels for really deep healing it's great for anybody um anybody 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 but especially if you're an empath if you're um if you deal with chronic pain or chronic conditions uh those types of things but i have a new service called renew now um not nearly as as big or involved but really really potent as well and a host of other services for you um, as, as well as obviously private reads and stuff like that. I also have ebooks. Those may come up. I have great ebooks on my on my website that are totally free. And I'm also an astral meditation guide. That's kind of my that's where my bag is. That's where my my energy really is um is is directed to help us all uh self-heal and and ascend so i get channel i get compelled channeled uh messages to do uh these astral meditations so you could see them and when i say compelled i mean guided that's the word i should use i get really guided to do these specific meditations just in the last week we did one for clearing abundance and the money womb we did one for um he uh body connection body love and connecting with your guardian angel we did one for healing and integrating with the uh, inner child, which is amazing. And we did one for eliminating and healing from fears, shame, guilt, judgment um, for, for, <laughs> for the, uh, like under the themes of money, love, the unknown and failures. And it encompasses a lot of stuff. So anyway, I invite you to check out those meditations. Those are just ones from the last few, last few days. Um, and then again, my eBooks, um, what is psychic attack and negative and how to um, eliminate negative energy. The other one is, uh, the essential empath guide with an empath quiz for you to take to see where you are on the scale of, of being an empath. Since I'm a physical psychic, physical empath, I'm like tipping the charts off the charts. I feel in my body exactly what you feel in your body. Um, and and it, in my body exactly like that. So if you have a headache, if you have a backache, if you have an, a neck, knee pain or whatever, whatever it is, I can feel that in my body. I used to be really sick with fibromyalgia because of it, because I had no control over that whatsoever. And now it's really different. For the most part, I can choose when to tap in with somebody um, instead of it just being really willy nilly. And that's kind of one of the things I teach as well is how to be a healthy, empowered empath. Then there's uh, there's more ebooks there. Uh, there's a few more there. So just check them out, please. They are free, like I said. Um, the one really important one is the importance of cord cutting, the importance of cord cutting. And I also have a guided companion meditation to help you through that cord cutting, to take you through that cord cutting. Uh, healing, self-healing. It's really beautiful. So anyway, more of that could come up, but I just want to let you know who I am, what I do. My website is thehealingbutterfly.org. I invite you to check out and see all that I have to offer there and reach out if you'd like to work with me personally.
personally. Okay, other than that, Aries, let's get us started. This is the portion of our read where I pick what cards we're gonna be using. We have been for every reading using the Moonology cards. And well, it's the full moon reading, it makes perfect sense, right? We also been using the Archangel Oracle for each of these reads. So I'm just gonna get that out of the way right away. See what else we got here as far as Oracle. I have uh, eight decks of Oracle, five decks of Tarot. Uh, feeling the Abundance uh, Oracle, the Angels of Abundance Oracle. And you're noticing an angel theme here. I am an earth angel and I do connect with the angelic realms first and foremost. And then from there, um, any guides and guardians that you may have. The way that I do these readings is I do connect with the angelic realms. Your guardian angels will guide you to come and partake of this reading. And so there's a good chance that this will really resonate with you um, on some level if you're watching this, but it is a general read. If you do, um, pick, if there are definite specifics that resonate you want a further deep dive into your specific situation please um see about uh working with me personally i have many options for tarot and oracle um so anyway just want to get that out of the way as far as you know with this angel thing because that'll probably come up since they are the ones that i work with um, most closely most reliable know everything about you and your situation so you know it is just what the easiest thing okay i'm feeling the light sears tarot and hidden worlds oracle so we have our oracles um oops a couple stragglers here and we're gonna get one more tear here for clarifying. And I'm feeling the Toth Tarot, the Crowley Toth Tarot. Okay, there we go. Plenty, 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 plenty. Okay, so let's get let's get us started with Moonology to start us off. We'll do some Archangel Oracle, then we'll do some Angels of Abundance, Hidden Worlds, and then the Tarot. Or maybe we'll change it up from Hidden Worlds at the end. <gasps> All righty, let's get this going. I don't know, not feeling that. We're gonna pick some cards here. A fiery climax approaches Aries. Oh, wow. I have not seen this card for any of these readings. So that's interesting. But we do have a full moon here. Full moon in Aries, Aries. Full moon in Aries, Aries. A fiery climax approaches. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see what else. Let's see what else. Hmm. Here. Step out of your comfort zone. So something, something exciting is coming here. Fiery climax approaches. Well, luck is on your side. Oh, these are all fantastic. Step out of your comfort zone. Luck is on your side. A fiery climax approaches. Let's get one more and put it together here. A win-win outcome is forecast. This has, this card has come out. This is full moon in Libra. I mean, sorry, so yes, full moon in Libra. We got new moon in Sagittarius. 
we have North Node with stepping out of your comfort zone, and we have Full Moon in Aries. So we have Aries and Libra, Full Moon energy. With a new moon in Sagittarius, luck is on your side. And step out of your comfort zone with North Node. Okay, those are our cards. So this fiery climax, you know, it could go either way. It could be a, a, a explosion, if you will, but I feel like truly for the most part, this is about, you kind of taking steps, like figuring something out or coming to a resolution, a conclusion, a revelation, an epiphany that's, it might seem like it's sudden, but it really isn't. It's been kind of building um, and it's a climax to that energy. Um, and I do feel, so just tap into that. It's kind of this really, it's not super, it's not like red, red, but it's this kind of reddish maroonish color we have here for you. Um, full moon in Aries. Either way, I think that it is going to push you a little bit out of your comfort zone. Whatever this is, it will, or maybe it already has happened. Um, it will push you a little bit out of your comfort zone, I feel. But luck is on your side. Luck is on your side. It's like, this is the way it needs to be. Like, there's some type of catalyst event within you, it could be on the outside too, that kind of pushes this, but it really feels like it's internal. And then it's like, boom, here we are. And it's, it's good. It's very, I feel it's very good, but it will push you to evolve. Basically it will, it will push you to into a new paradigm that will be out of your comfort zone. This could just very well be the, the real awakening for you too, to really kind of see beyond the, the material world and then maybe more into the spiritual. Maybe you dabbled a little bit, but um, I feel that it's just, when I'm, with luck, it feels more like synchronicity. When I see luck, when, when I hear about luck, I don't really believe, I don't believe in luck. I don't think there's any such thing as, as luck. It's energy. And it's, it's what you manifest and how you feel about stuff and, and synchronicity. So when I see luck, I really feel synchronicity. So I feel that there's like a chain of synchronicities that's going to be like, <laughs> like you can't ignore it. And it, it's a catalyst for now. What it is, I don't know but surprises are good. That's a bit specific for a general reading, but I feel that for, for a few of you that, that it's very much a, an awakening kind of thing. Um, and also can have to do with, uh, changing the environment to suit you or getting into that mode of thinking about what needs to change. It could be a breakup. It could be, okay, now that I'm here and I'm really getting this stuff with energy, et cetera, et cetera, that this job I'm in, this relationship I'm in, this best friend I have, this whatever is not conducive to, to this whole new paradigm. I find myself this major shift and, um, and you're going to realize that all things come to an, an end. There is a natural evolution to relationships and situations. Nothing is meant to last forever. That's the nature of the universe is constant change and evolution out with the old in with the new. That's just, that's just what it's all about. 
we can't stay in the same place that we've always been, especially if things are majorly changes like a fiery climax approaches. And this very well could be about a breakup or a divorce or a separation or a fine, a final in that a um, could be with yourself. Like I'm just over my shit. I'm over my own shit. <laughs> I am over my own shit and I need to change stuff. And what is that going to be? Um, and I think we all, if we're an evolve, if we're trying to, to heal and mend ourselves and move and evolve and, and all of that, we all get to those places in time where we're just like, we see patterns and we're like, oh, I'm so done with this. What is up with these patterns? Whatever it is, usually it's relationships, money, fear-based stuff that has a lot of re repetitive patterny type stuff because until we see it for what it is, we're just going to keep living it. It's just the way that it is. We have to find the hidden door and break ourselves free with whatever that deal is. So there's that. Um, and I actually wrote an article that was, um, it was called, what is it called? Um, oh shoot, now I'm spacing what it's called, but it's basically, all about you know not every relationship or it's not a, it's about how endings in relationship doesn't equal failure and a lot of society most of society oh you broke up fail fail you know oh you're not friends with the person you were friends with for 30 years fail oh you're you broke up with the guy you were dating for two years fail oh your marriage failed after 10 years fail maybe that's just a really shitty way of looking at how we time moves and stuff it doesn't i'm not saying that there weren't you know mistakes or whatever but here's the thing not everybody's supposed to be in your life forever and just imagine if everybody you ever knew you were friends with and were connected to that you stay connected to always and forever no it's not the way it's supposed to be even with the people closest to you even with your familiars even even with your own children even with your parents even with you know people that you're married to you're not always meant to always be in each other's lives always 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 and forever not for everything maybe that's just the way it is and so but i think that we we tend to decide if this ends it's a fail and i think it's our perspective that puts it in whatever category that we choose to have that in. And then that resonates energetically. And again, um, Aries, if this is actual, if this is for you a breakup or, or, you know, some type of breakup shakeup kind of thing, if um, it's already happened, please consider cutting cords. Um, or if you're in the process of it, thinking about it, cut cords now, go read my ebook. And you'll understand more about it. I could cut cords till the end. I could talk about cutting cords till the end of time. Peace with Shamuel. Peace comes from remembering only love is real. Oh, perfect card. Perfect card for this whole little thing we got going on. So it's better to be loving sometimes than correct or right. It's better to have peace than to need to have the last word. It's better to think about the person's soul and inner child than it is to think about maybe their shitty attitude and how they've treated you. Because none of us are perfect. All of us mess up. You know, it's like we have to tend to the reality that when we when we hold on to anger and frustration and aggression that that molds our world. And when we come from a place of peace, harmony, positivity, love, that molds our world. Even through challenging times, especially so, and breakups and time away from people definitely cause an energetic shift in the world. And, um, and so, you know, things can be brought up from the past sometimes, you know, during the, these situations. So if that's the case, just try to stay in that, in that sense of being peaceful. Outdoors with Joe Fiel. 
outdoors with Joe Fial. Go outside, get some fresh air, and connect with nature to relieve stress and gain new creative ideas. Well, yeah, going outside always helps, even if it's for 10 minutes, sitting in your patio, getting some sun, changing the, changing the, the energy that's around you. And of course, Mother Gaia with her, with her divine, beautiful energy um, is always looking to help heal us through nature, through the, through her and our connection to the sun, the air, the water especially is extremely cleansing and healing. If you can go out into nature outdoors and get into water, that's the best, um, but just being outside. Okay, next, clairvoyance with Raziel. I am helping your spiritual sight to awaken fully so you can clearly see heavenly love. So um, I really feel that this, this definitely is about um a new leveling up spiritually seeing more feeling more understanding more raziel saying i am helping with your spiritual sight i have been helping with this so psychic abilities telepathy synchronicities feelings in the body things like this is all part of that and affirmation for you that you're not crazy it's not all in your head it's not wackadoodle and you're not you know going through some weird mental thing this is actually the way that it is it's a spiritual awakening you start to perceive more um your everything shifts everything shifts your energy shifts completely when you're sleeping when you're not what you're into watching who you're into being around what takes your attention you'll start getting into stuff that you've never been into before it's all spiritual metaphysical all that kind of stuff so we're definitely feeling that let's get one more overcoming difficulties i love this card so much Jeremiel says the worst is now behind you and you are surmounting previous challenges. So I feel that with whatever this is or was, because this could be just very new or feel very new, even if it's been a couple months. Um, I had a thing with a person back in December and it feels still very, very fresh because it's just how things go with our energy, you know? So this, so when we think about time, present, past, even future, it gets a little muddled in our energy and emotions. So um, overcoming difficulties, <sighs> breathe, peace, know that this transition is going to bring in a whole new lovely time for yourself it, it there it is going to be peaceful it is going to be better and again outdoors to help you through this as much as you can um but this is all really positive it's just just the the norm of how things go when we're leveling up um you can help yourself with more understanding of energy um there's a good chance you're an empath and you don't know it or you're like okay whatever that is you know yeah i've heard of it i'm not really well, i think that you should probably take a look at my book the essential empath guide and do the test or just google whatever it doesn't have to be mine google empath test take a few of them see how see how you rate because i will almost guarantee you that you are an empath and that you probably haven't understood just how how that is all encompassing in your life. And because it's biological, not theoretical. It's not emotional. It's biological to be an empath. Our neurotransmitters are bigger than non-empaths. So we feel, see, know, understand more in the energy. And even if we're not cognizant of it, we're still processing that energy. So, you know, your sixth sense, your understanding of when things are false or, or real, um, knowing when people feel good or not. I mean, I could go on and on forever with this one too. So <laughs> all of that is real and true and energetic and not a thing that's a theory um, or a woo-woo thing. It's very, very biological. And so you have to treat yourself accordingly. Okay, moving on. Angels of Abundance. Angels of Abundance. Angels of Abundance, the 
viewed your Aries as we're going through a climax, a transition, a change in the energy for you. Um, one way or another, big shifts, but in a, all positive, all positive. Those two savings and focus on your priorities. Let's start with focus on your priorities. These two cards I think came out in one of the other reads recently too. Where you put your focus is where you receive your outcome. So like I was saying earlier, you come from a place of love, you come from a place of, of frustration or anger. That's the that's what you're gonna get. Um, your priorities are calling to you, which may produce a feeling of anxiety unless you give them the time and attention they and you deserve. Even a small amount of time towards your priorities will help you feel better and more confident. So this has actually been a theme with this full moon going into March where it's like we really need some structure and some priorities. And that, that's typically difficult for us woo-woo energy people because it's constantly in flux and it's difficult to stay with any type of structure because it te seems to get blown away pretty easily. Um, I definitely can understand that. But we can still whittle down the, the stuff that really uh, feeds our soul and prioritize our time in that regard and, and, and kind of I'm feeling like, let's take a look at all the things that the have to's and the need to's and the passions, and let's, let's restructure what we're looking at starting with, with this new month after this full moon is really giving us this energy to do that. So I, I, that's what I'm getting with this is, is there's things that you need to do to feed your soul, especially at this time. For me, it's art. I, ha I have to do art. I need to do art. Um, I'm a divinely guided artist. It just poof became an ability of mine. I have stuff I need to do with that. And it's been on the back burner because there's been other things. So it's like tick, tick, tick. Hello, 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 hello. And you're like, I know, I know, I know. It's a big deal, but I, this is taking priority. This is taking priority. Well, maybe that energy, and that's not to say that's not true, but maybe the energies have shifted. So maybe you do some type of, of art or crafts or whatever it is that you haven't done in a while because there's been all this other stuff going on. This is the time to shift that around. We have gotten that message kind of over and over again. I'm feeling it here because of shift your focus on your priorities. So there we go. And then say, Savings. As you consistently save for your future, your future is saved. You do your future self a big favor as you consistently set aside present funds. This is a part of your self care and path to feeling secure as you focus upon your life purpose. And that is definitely a deal for sure. I've experienced this myself, not being somebody that saves and then being somebody that saves and seeing just how good that feels to have that savings um, when you need it. And, and that always comes around, right? And especially this last year has shown us that, you know, anything can happen at any time and it's always feels good to feel secure, have that self-love, that self-care to save. So, um, it, but that's not to say be skimpy and, and chintzy and, and a skip, cheapskate with yourself um, at all. It's it's just to say spend money on on what is important to you, what feels good to you, and and put away and save the rest that you don't need to spend on right now. Um, And I'm also hearing saving your energy. So think about what you expend your energy on and what is just not, what is, what is this? Oh, so this is about like, 
giving too much energy to others and not saving it for yourself for those priorities. So these are okay. I get it now. So, these, so money, money is definitely a thing here, saving money. But what I'm picking up here is saving energy because money is energy too. So this is like the closest. I, I, I don't know. I can't think of other cards, but this is what I'm getting for this right now. It kind of has a twofold thing going on money and pure energy, your pure energy Aries. And that needing to be a cons it's something you conserve, especially now, and have it go into the me pile. You only have so much, say you have 100 energy chips per day. If we're giving away 90 of those chips and saving 10 just to get up and move around and wipe our butts, <laughs> what else is that leaving for our priorities? not much you know and i've done that too it's like i'm so do 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 and then it's like okay i can do that fun thing that I wanna, huh. and then you're just like no i'm done i'm tired i'm not doing any of that so this is definitely about saving energy for you okay one more face your financial fears when you are honest with yourself about fears of success or failure they can no longer control you be free to be free of hidden fears by exposing them to the light of awareness. Ah, and you'll realize that you, in fact, have nothing to fear and that every successful person has struggled with and released these self-doubts. Yeah, it's like the imposter syndrome, um, you know, things not working out, financial fears connected to success and like how am i gonna you know manage all this or whatever it is i've been there too it's like oh that i'm responsible for all these people that i'm helping you know as a healer or whatever it's like how can i do that and do my life at the same time so you kind of like uh you know and then it doesn't happen because you know you were scared that it would it was gonna happen <laughs> So you have to get out of your own way and recognize what it is that you do fear. Do you fear having responsibility? Do you fear that you won't, you know, take care of it right or whatever the case may be? Like I said, I did do a meditation recently for healing from fears. This is part of it. So money was like the, the number one that we started with. It was money, love, the unknown and failures. And a lot of times they kind of wrap up together. But anyway face your financial fears and let's heal from that energy. So you're invited to do that meditation. Okay. Moving on. Uh, yeah, let's go straight to hidden worlds and we'll, and then we'll do tarot. Where are we at here? Oh, I don't know. I thought I had a timestamp, but apparently I don't. Usually don't pay attention. I was just curious. Whatever it is. Clear these with some incense. Well, it's not incense, it's Palo Santo and Sage. And by the way, these reads are for any any of your ascendant, your your moon, or your sun sign. Um so check out all the different ones for they for your uh for what you got going on. Sun, moon, ascending. Uh, the Isle of Wonders, Revelation, Touching Discovery, or what? Teaching and Discovery. The Isle of Wonders. Yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense for today, for this read. Card number four. The Isle of Wonders from the Hidden Worlds Oracle by Lucy Cavendish. Absolutely love this oracle so much. So revelation, teaching and discovery. Some places are so precious that they must be completely protected. Such is this place, the Isle of Wonders, shrouded by the mist of the waterfalls, guarded by the turbulence of the waters. It can only be reached through becoming light and flying there. What does this mean for you? 
that in order to learn what your soul craves to understand, you must become light enough to travel over the waters into the Isle of Wonders itself. When this card comes to you, know you are being guided to become light. So your soul can travel to this place and explore the marvels of this place. It is a place of peace and of great teaching and discovery of soulful intellect and, spirit, and spirited intelligence. There lies such a place deep within you, and you can discover this place within. For while the Isle of Wonders continues to exist, so too does the wonder within you. It may be time to rise above and free yourself from what has held you back. And this can take place in subtle potent ways. It is not a literal escape, although adventure can always assist us outdoors, Jophiel says. This is more a freeing of yourself from all that is around you, which convinces you that you can no longer learn, that it is dangerous to discover that believing in marvels is the domain of fantasy. It is not, for this place exists to generate the belief of the, in the marvelous, the desire to learn, and the repeated and peaceful liberation of the unchained soul. Fly now, friend, and let yourself visit this most marvelous place and learn of all that is pure and true again. I have the freedom to learn and to discover. My soul thrives on adventure. Oh, it's so lovely. Lovely, lovely. So we have that we're in this. It's like, yes, this is a thing for you. Like I was saying, it's like there is this sense of um, of transition. It's ask, we're asking you to get lighter. When you get lighter, your vibration gets higher. When you get higher in your vibration, then you have the ability to connect with your, with your higher self, your soul, <clears throat> excuse me, your soul and your, um, and those around you and, and the worlds that we definitely, the hidden worlds that, that we have privy to us. But what this is saying is that, is that because all of this is real, that, that may have felt like fantasy before, you know, for, for other people, um, is blending into this real world. And to check in on that, we have to go within. So this is also why meditation and healing, that's how you get lighter you heal. That's what it's all about. Heavy energy is heavy and dense. So this is why angry negative people um, are the way that they are and happy, healthy people are the way that they are. There's a very difference, a, a very big difference in the energy that's within them. Heavy, dense energy, light, um, bright energy, if you will. So the more meditation you do, the more healings you do on yourself or go to others like myself or anybody else that you please find using your guidance and discernment and really what it feels, what feels good to you. Not all healers are created the same, unfortunately. Um, so, so please, please, please your, use your discernment when it comes to that. Um, but anyway, it's about lightening up your, your energy, releasing, um, and transition, all of this stuff. It's overcoming difficulties is about being lighter in your energy, releasing the density, letting go, cutting cords, all of that stuff. Very, very much in theme. Okay, let's move on to the tarot and see what else we get. And again, my resources on my website, my ebooks, um, my videos, uh, all that stuff. It's all centered around empaths and light workers and spirituality and energy and evolving and ascension and all of this stuff to be lighter, to be healthier to not be in pain in the multitude of ways that we can be in our bodies and in our lives. Um, as I've had quite the 180 
uh, situation myself from going to, from being very, being somebody who was very sick and lower vibration just because of the circumstances of my, of my own body being a, a physical empath to such a degree. Um, and then figuring that stuff out and then everything changing because I, I knew what was going on and I could change that for myself and, and take control. So it's about taking control of your energy, your life, what, what is in, what you're consuming in different ways, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, let's stop the fire. Okay. All righty, that is all nice and clear. Just felt the need to get to do some, some um, I like to do Sage and Palo Santo on my cards sometimes right before we start. So they're nice and clear. Right here. First card, the emperor jumping out to say hello. And this is always an Archangel Michael thing. So you're definitely being led by really potent guides. You wouldn't be here if you weren't. <laughs> um, this sun. Oh my God, I love it. Oh, the emperor and the sun. Shut up right now. Ten of pentacles. Very happy, 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 happy. And Ace of Pentacles. Wow, I like these cards so far. Let's see what's next. Two of Cups, Two of Cups in reverse. Seven of Swords. Uh, seven of wands. Interesting. Seven and seven, but this is, is this, are we in reverse? No, we're straight up. The seven of wands. Love this picture. Queen of pentacles. Always my, the card that I feel really mother Gaia, mother earth Gaia coming in strongly with this queen of pentacles. This is this is really intense. Wow. Okay. And then 10 of swords. Right side up. Took me a second. I pulled it in reverse, but that doesn't always mean that that's what it needs to be. You have to check in some things. And uh, five of swords. In reverse, excuse me, in reverse. Okay. Okay. So right off the bat here for my reads and um, and especially with this, with this tarot deck, um, this em emperor is Archangel Michael in the uh, angel tarot. He is actually the emperor in in the angel tarot. So if you're familiar with that deck, you'll know that. Um, and in this deck, I very much feel that energy here with him, the emperor. Um, you have the sun right after the emperor, right after this Michael energy coming in to say, there is like, oh my God, look at how amazing and happy this beautiful card is to say, this is what we is there. This is what you are. This is what is there. This is what um, this is what is real I'm hearing. And so there may have been darkness, there may have been turmoil, of course, there usually is with us, right? But what it's saying is, is that we have so much of this energy coming through this. We have the emperor, the sun, the ten of pentacles and the ace of pentacles, the four that came out together, jumped out together, the Emperor, the Sun, Ten of Pentacles, and Ace of Pentacles. So a lot of abundance, a lot of um, happiness here. This We've got this family thing going on. And I'm really feeling like this is kind of even more showing me what's going on in, in on the other side of the veil for you. Like a lot of spirit is showing up, um, like being led by Archangel Michael. And that there's so much that it's just kind of pouring in this this like real spiritual abundance um, 
two of cups right after that ace of, pe of pentacles. And I love that it's in reverse. And for me with this, with this card in this deck, it means that this is really you bringing into yourself. Um, this is like you and your soul coming together and letting the energies blend. So the so the real truth of yourself, who and what you are, what is this world? What is your place in it? What's your, what's your destiny? What's your purpose? What's your mission? All that stuff. I mean, there are answers to that. There is a purpose for you being here. And, um, and it's always connected to our spirit, to our spirituality, to our soul and to everything that we're connected to on in, in the universe and, and on the other side of what we cannot see with our eyes, we could feel with our, with our bodies and, and hear with our, with our, um, with our minds that is outside of us. Um, and that. The next card here, the Seven of Swords. Oh, this to me is telling you, um, you're gonna start seeing what needs to go and you're gonna be hearing about it in a big way. Look at that birdie. He's just like, yo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because what I'm picking up from this is just like we have we have the illumination coming from from the from the moon there. And the light shining through that full moon so it's definitely connected with the full moon here but it's just saying like. You're going to start to be aware of what takes your energy, who you're connected to, and what needs to end. And look at how similar these cards are here. Look at the Seven of Wands and look at the Queen of Pentacles together. Oh my goodness. If I could ever relate to a set of cards, it would be this meditation and connecting with Gaia. Because like I said, everything that I do comes from Gaia, comes from my connection with Mother Earth and her facilitate, her channeling through meditations for me, meditation. So what this is telling me right now, what I'm seeing this right now is that you need to have a very similar um, relationship with yourself with meditation, making that a priority. and connecting with Gaia in meditation, in healing. And all, like I said, all of my facilitated meditations that you can find on my podcast has the bulk of them. There's only a few on this, on this channel um, that I have currently. My older channel had more, but my podcasts have the most recent, all the, the meditations that I've done for the last couple of years or a year and a half or whatever it's been. And um, the, the need to go within and just remove yourself as much from the the daily hectic world and go within, connect with yourself, connect with your guides, connect with Gaia, do is just do as much meditation as you possibly can. It's really going to help you through this as well as energy healing. That's coming up again. Um, and 10 of, of swords. Yes. Yes. 10 of swords is to me that's you and your guides leading you leading you and look at all that space and all that energy here that's just open and light love that card and it's right under the ace of pentacles so it's like this upper upper level energy and knowing is pouring right down through your guides and guardians, through your your most closest um, 
guardian angel, archangels, obviously you're very, very close with this realm. And so you are, you do have this coming in. Aries, you do have this coming in. So I, I highly suggest that you, that you get into this. I mean, it's just like really, really waiting for you. And it's like, and, and Michael's just like, yeah, we're just here. We're just waiting. We're just sitting. We're just here waiting, sitting. It's time will come. We're, we've got all the time in the world. We're waiting for it to all come together for you. And this energy here, this is somebody who's got way too much negativity in the head, way too worried, has anxiety, has too many people in their ear talking to them, distracting them. But guess what? This card came out in reverse. So what that means is that, and it's right underneath the two of wands, also in reverse. I mean, sorry, two of cups, also in reverse. So what this is saying is, the, the situation that is mostly like this, is going to be like this, has the potential of turning around and making it so that's not the case anymore. So it's in reverse. It's not the case anymore. And so, but that's completely up to you because the changes that need to be made are not going to happen from other people. So it's all about you doing this. You being the one stepping into faith. Um, not being afraid to, to do these really deep meditations and healings, to, to really dive in with both feet, to take your spirituality and your health to a whole new level. And you have a lot of support on the other side. And, and if you just go with that, you'll see how things will un unfold for you in a very beautiful way. Um, and I feel that you have, uh, you have a really deep, deep connection to the earth and wanting to, to heal the earth even. Um, and so, oh boy, you have judgment coming out for our first card over that emperor the devil over the sun. Uh, we have strength in reverse over the pentacles. We have the prince, what is this? The princess of, oh, sorry, the priestess. The priestess. The star. The emperor again under the first emperor qualifying and clarifying that seven of swords the magician over the seven of wands holy moly the knight of cups over that queen of pentacles representing gaia the knight of swords over the ten of swords and Huh. And the nine of swords over the five of swords. Straight up. That card's also known as cruelty. Okay, so let's get going here. What we have with um, the emperor is judgment. Um, also known as the Aeon in, um, in the Toth Tarot, Toth Tarot. So judgment is about balance and um, as you can see here, 
there is the, 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 the person, the figure in the back and the person in the front that you can see through. So this is representing the, the higher and the lower and balancing out the higher and the lower of, of our consciousness coming, coming in um, over the emperor, which was, which was this really strong Archangel Michael energy um, talks about balance, balancing out the energies, wanting to balance out your life, balancing out the light and the dark, the devil over the sun, same thing. Basically the same thing. The devil representing illusion, representing things that we're chained to, but our own illusions, our own usually fears and, and, and reasons why we, we, we stay in what we stay in and typically trapped in our own in our own little worlds here. So it shows you these people down here. If you take a look at these two little circle block things and how they appear trapped. So there's the ones that are all kind of in it. And then the, there's the ones that are out. And so the idea here is to be going, oh, I'm getting out of this, out of this and into the sun, leaving the, leaving the illusion of the devil and going into the sun. I mean, I don't know how much obvious that needs to be. It's pretty, pretty obvious. Um, and then we have the, the, um, the justice card with um, your 10 of pentacles. So this is awesome. So really feeling with this energy here that, um, and there's that justice card. Normal in, in the toast tarot, so I have my little cheat sheets here. In the in the toast tarot, they're called different things. So it's called lust in the in the toast tarot. Um, but this is really about a um, a unity, a coming together, a working. Like if you see, she is riding this this amazing lion with the with the justice card and um, getting things. You know, the the higher, the lower, the that whole thing. Um, so with this ten of pentacles, it's showing me that there is this great protection. Um, whoopsie. <laughs> There is this sense of protection of of um, having such a such a team. I think I'm talking to an Earth Angel here. Or earth Angels. This really feels very angel bound to the Earth kind of thing. Trust me, I know what that's like. Um, the Priestess with um, the Priestess here with this Eight of Pentacles. So the priestess is all, look at her. She's super uh, psychic, um, connected to spirit. And with that ace of pentacles, like I said, this is what's coming down for you. So this would be like, you're the high priestess and this is what's coming down for you from above to give you strength and energy, empowerment, motivation, um, all that good stuff. And and here with the um, with the two of cups, we have the star. So it's just more. It's just I feel more of this energy coming in, and the star qualifying these two of cups that we talked about. This energy coming down from your soul. That's like that is that. Um, the star card is really is really saying like it's just uh, acceptance. I'm feeling acceptance with the star card. Uh, and then the emperor again, that's right. We got the emperor below the emperor. So we have two, the two emperors very, very close together. So again, Archangel Michael, and he's saying, yeah, that would be me. That would be me and your guardian angel and whoever's working with you, telling you, you know, shouting to you where to go, shouting to you, um, that what you need to know. The magician again, so we have the magician, the star, um, the priestess, I mean, these are all really, really intensely, um, I'm he hearing like natural healer and um, 
could be very into animals, animal healing even. Knight of Cups over the Yeah, 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 definitely. Knight of Cups over the Queen of Pentacles. See that angel there riding that horse, that horse looking straight at you. What's he doing? He's reaching, he's going for it. He wants the prize and the prize is his own strength, spirituality, connection to spirit, to Gaia. And this horse, horse energy in that drive up two horses here with the Knight of Cups, the Knight of Swords, two knights here right next to each other with this Queen of Pentacles and Ten of Swords, Knight of Cups and Knight of Swords. Look at So a lot of swift energy with these horses coming in to just really propel you into the future with this connection but again it all starts with you because last but not least what we have here with this five of swords remember he just looks like no bueno um but the potential of course is for that to be no more so it's just really illustrating for you it's really your decision you know is this going to be a present condition or are we going to have this being the past condition because with this nine of swords really showing you it can go on and it can be uncomfortable this is called the cruelty card with the nine see that cruelty with the nine of swords literally nine swords coming in but on the flip side the nines represent um light workers so as, as it, the case may be, light workers do deal with a lot of negativity and cruelty and, um, and just the, the road being difficult to understanding um, and all that good stuff about who and what you are and really going on that path because there is so much interference. But when you decide to take the reins in that, when you decide that this is no more, that like what was is not anymore, and you're coming in with this power of the emperor of Michael twice, one on top of the other, I mean, not like emperor, emperor, but you have emperor and judgment, which is like wanting to bring in balance into the situation for you wanting to see both sides of that and then we have the emperor over the seven of swords and the seven of swords like i told you this is about you seeing the light through the darkness through that full moon and being able to recognize to hear to be guided by your guides and then we have the emperor again um so there you go <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. So this is a really, really great reading for you, Aries. This is just talking about your potentiality of awakening, of releasement, of um, making yourself lighter and go, being led to the Isle of Wonders. This is privy to you and, and um, it's opening up, these, this portal is opening up for you to get into this energy. So I really hope that this motivates you to either continue to learn more about energy and and, and your health, what it is to be an empath, what it is to cut cords, or if you're new to all that stuff, you've landed in the right place, please go to my website, download the those meditations, the ebooks, read all about that stuff, just consume it. If you're compelled to work with me um, at any point in time, personally, reach out, we'll get it going. If not, just take it all in and see what happens. Prioritize your month with what you need to do. Think about those um the climax that needs to, to to come to an end something's gonna happen that that really kind of forces this new paradigm to take place um and i think those energies are coming in with the full moon and going into march so good luck with all that you are loved you're really really supported you're very connected you're ready for your next um your next not only next chapter but next book in the series. And that's really exciting. So congratulations there, Aries. I hope this resonated with you. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment down in, in the comments. Let me know how you feel about this. And I will see you soon, Aries. Have a beautiful moon and into March. Until next time, infinite love and blessings. Don't forget, the key is to create. I love you already. And always live in love. Bye for now.